Excuse me, Mikey Pipes. Happy Sunday. Sunday morning, 7.50 a.m. It is 22 degrees out in beautiful Cedarhurst, New York. We're on our way to Far Rockaway. Gentleman called last night around 1.30 in the morning and he had no heat. The pilot's not on his boiler. And I said, listen, it is 1.30 in the morning. I had a little couple to drink tonight, so unfortunately I can't come out to you. All right? It's like, but I'll be there eight o'clock in the morning if that works. Alternatively, I'll pull one of my guys out of bed. And I'll Red light camera recorded ahead. He goes, oh, I'll see you in the morning, Mikey Pipes. Have a good night's sleep. I was like, you bet. Now I'm wide awake. And I wake up, I get two more other service calls. Two other people needing help. One's an old Westbury. He's got a burn him alpine with a red screen. The screen of death. And no, there's no one sitting in the seat next to me because it's Sunday morning. No Peter Pan. No the other Mike. No Daniel Sun. And no mysterious unknown name. Unless you paid attention, you caught his name. Who's starting tomorrow? Straight from Florida where it's warm. And here it's cold. Make sure you check us out on Reddit. Link in the description box down below. I'd really appreciate it if you smash that thumbs up button. Smash it. If you haven't done so already, subscribe. Thank you in advance. Now let's get going to our first service call. All right. Far rock away. To get my, uh, let's see, which veto should I take? The TPXL or the TPXXL? I'm going to go for the XXL. I got to tell you, it's really an up and coming neighborhood. They're building these revitalized buildings there, you see. Look, got one already over there. Oh, let's go see what's going on with this guy's boiler. Good morning. How you doing? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. What did he go out? Um. Um. Yesterday around. Pressure troll. Come on, baby. Let's tap on the pressure troll. Yeah. That's right, baby. Come on. Voila. Voila. Was it all the way up or you turned it all the way up? I turned it, I it was already all the way up. <laughs> and I turned it down and I put it back all the way up. Let's try that again. Power cycle this thing. How old is this boiler? It's not that old. Relatively new. To find um, that in years, if you could. <laughs> I want to say, I want to say less than ten. Oh, okay. No, no more than ten. And when's the last time it was serviced? Maybe about a few years ago. Okay. And the only thing I did. All right, again, this is a steam boiler, so I'm going to give you a little bit of an education. Steam boiler. There are not that many safety sensors on mm -hmm. this that will prevent 
the boil from operation. Okay. Number one, you have a steam boiler, so you always have to have water. Yeah, and it's right? an automatic water Exactly, you have an automatic feeder over there, and that it gives it water as it needed. <laughs> this black box is called low water cutoff. Mm -hmm. If it senses there's no water there, it's not let the boiler run. On here, I'll get to the last one. I'll get to the last one in a second. Right here, this little switch right here, which has been uh, bypassed. Mm -hmm. Wow, bypassed completely. <laughs> oh, so that's just out. That's just out, yeah. And how it's letting the boiler run, that's a great question. There's also another one right there. So that's not supposed to be out. No, no, it's not supposed to be like that. <laughs> There's, that's a rollout switch, so when the flames have a rollout, if they ever do, it'll uh -huh. burn that switch out and the boiler's dead. Okay. Um, but most importantly, what I did here, because again, I know steam, I know it looks like a fairly new boiler, but 10 years is not that new. Yeah. I just smacked this, it's called the pressure troll. Mm -hmm. Pressure troll's connected to this little loopy looking pipe, it's called the pigtail. Pigtails get clogged, it doesn't sense pressure, it turns the boiler off. We're gonna take apart the pressure troll and we're gonna see if it's clogged enough. If it's not clogged, you may need a new pressure troll if you smack, keep smacking this thing in the future. Okay. But if it's clogged, we'll clean out the pigtail or replace it and we'll be on our way. Okay. And then we gotta figure out why this, why this was disconnected. Bingo. So uh, because sometimes it needs to be drained, right? No, sometimes it needs to be serviced and taken out. Because if it's clogged, it's not going to sense pressure. If it senses high pressure and it's clogged, you know, you bang on it, okay, now it goes away, right? Because it's not getting that clear path. So we're going to take out the pigtail. Okay. All right, added a coupling, a nipple there. So we're going to scratch the boiler every time this pressure hose will be taken out. We don't get any debris on the roller cutoff. Now, Spill switch, block vent switch, not connected. And if we follow the wire, right, right there, to this group of wire, which goes here, which goes right there, and wire together. They're not wired to anything. They're not wired to anything. So we need to connect this one there, connect this one there and cut here and break 24 volts to electronic ignition module. Okay, they never wired it right. So we, instead of both black wires going down here, right, we took one red wire that was going to the electronic ignition module, brought it to the rollout switch there and took the red, the black wire that was going both, uh, Instead of both black wires going to that roller, I switched, I took one of them and took it to where the red wire was on the electronic mission module. So now, if this should ever fail, it kills the boiler, mm -hmm. right? And what I mean by fail is that if the chimney, something goes wrong with the chimney and the exhaust gas, instead of going up here through the chimney and out, chimney collapses, chimney whatever, chimney can't chimney anymore, right? Mm -hmm. The gases, those carbon monoxide gases come to the house, it's gonna sense the temperature, turn the boiler off, right? And save your life. If that switch right there, if the boiler ever gets clogged, or there's so much positive pressure where the, the flames are not going up, they're going out, it's gonna start burning up the boiler, it's gonna burn out that switch, the boiler's dead at that point. This you could reset, because there's a little switch in the middle, a little button in the middle of, this, of that right there, between those two little clips, right in the middle. There's a little button, resettable button, right? If you ever have to reset that, you know, have your chimney looked at. Oh, well. If that ever, you come here, there's no heat, no nothing, you take the cover off, you see all this charred up mm -hmm. around there, and it's time to get a replace the boiler. Oh, well. Or get it thoroughly cleaned. I think that's something I'm gonna have done so maybe we Yeah. And, you know, our near boiler piping looks proper. Hartford loop is nice. And not too shabby. All right, finishing up this service call. Pressure control tested, low water cutoff tested, rollout spill switch tested. All right, just finished up that steam boiler emergency service call with the clogged pigtail over in Far Rockaway. In case you guys don't know, Far Rockaway is the southern and easternmost part of Queens, the borough of Queens in New York City. New York City consists of five boroughs. We have Queens County, Kings, also known Brooklyn County. It's also technically called Kings County.
Staten Island, Manhattan Island, and the Bronx. And we're based in Valley Stream, which is on Long Island, which is in Nassau County. We're right on the border of Queens, where, where uh, Nassau County meets Queens near Rosedale and Laurelton, Cambria Heights, and a little bit, just a little bit south, like a sea hair south, is the Rockaways. So we're gonna hit on, we're, gonna, we're on Burnside for all, all, the, all of those who know, actually Sheridan, which turned into Burnside, Beach Channel Drive. We're gonna hit uh, the 878, and then we're gonna hit Peninsula Boulevard, and we're gonna drive all the way north, all the way north to Old Westbury. And let's take a guess, guys, let's take a vote. Taj Mahal or no Taj Mahal? What do you guys think? Old Westbury. A lot of wealth up there and a lot of estates and compounds. So let's go give them some heat for their Burnham Alpine with the red screen of death. Smash that thumbs up button. Thank you. In advance. All right, here we are. We are on Old Westbury Road. We are in Old Westbury. As you can see, we have compounds and estates. Taj Mahal's. Real Taj Mahal's. You know, people have long driveways where you can't even see their, their houses, right? So this guy, he's got a Burnham Alpine with the red screen of death. And maybe one day, buddy, maybe one day. And um, we're gonna see what he's got going on. I love coming up here. Reminds me of a song called Dream. In 0.1 miles, turn left. Dream, 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 dream. Let me say, let me tell you something. Dream big. You know what? You work hard and hustle and reap the rewards. All right. Let's see if we can find the house. Let's see. See? Not so big Taj Mahal's here, like normal Taj Mahal's, just estates, large properties. It's nice. All right, I mean, we can respect this guy's privacy. One of the things I always try to do, and that's park in the street. Don't park in the driveway unless they specifically tell you to. You know, showing respect and concern for their their property. You know, you never know. I may drop a little oil and bump my brand new Benz, but unlikely. But it just shows you that you respect their property. All right, let's ring their bell. Good morning. Hi, hey, Mike. How are you, sir? Good, how are you? Hi. Good morning. You look cold. <laughs> All right, move the way. It's a cold day today. Yeah. A nice yard. Thank you. A lot of mowing, though. <laughs> Yeah, tell me about it. Tell me rents. Someone in the military? No, this is my friend. Oh. He was in Afghanistan. Ooh. You make it out alive? Thank God. All right. I just, I, I just shut it down. Okay. So let's turn it on. Yeah. Uh, I saw you YouTube. You did? You got me. And what happened, you know, last... You got no pressure. You got no pressure. The screen of death. Let's take a look. Oh, this is a big Alpine. This is 285. It's a big boy. That's a big boy with the original high pressure limit. I mean, a high temperature limit. But first things first, pressure gauge is not reading any pressure. Okay, this is stuck. It's cold. You have faucets work in the house? What? The faucets run water? Faucet? Yeah, the faucets. Faucets are, are good? The host, oh, why is the water off? Actually, you know, last, you know, uh, like three weeks ago, I had a water leak. 
3 a.m. The water came down here. Oh, uh, so, so the, oh, you got a burst pipe too. Yeah, maybe it's a frozen and then something like that. Oh, you should have told me that. <laughs> <laughs> so I shut it down, you know. All right, let's yeah. let's start over. Yeah, no, I'll do it. That's that's let's see. So let's close this. Let's close that. Close this. Close this. Close that and let's pray. Let's see. So water drinking starts from here and then goes that way. But you know, now in the whole world is before it's coming down. Now I see that. Okay, so that's on. This, is, this goes nowhere. This is the boiler. Let's isolate that. Let's isolate everything. All right, let's isolate. That's the indirect. It's not leaking. Let's close this one. This one. This one. This one, this is radiant. Yeah, it's radiant. It's radiant. I don't think, yeah, but you never know. Let's close everything anyway. And then we'll power up and fill the boiler up and see. Okay. Here's an open door expansion packs here. Okay, and that's closed. Now. Open up boiler feed valve. Okay. Now water's restored. I don't know where this goes. Maybe an outside hose force if this goes nowhere. Now, let's add water. Back to the boiler. Which one of these pipes burst, but something in there burst. I'm gonna have to open this up. Who's your insurance carrier? Uh, Steve. Okay. All right, we're getting pressure on the boiler. This is our radiant. Let's open this one. Open this one. Okay. Now, let's. is basement, second floor, first floor, water heater. Basement. And maybe this matches basement. Okay, second floor. Well, that leaves this one left, first floor. So if we open this, we should have a flood over there. But no. Pressure is good. All right, I opened up the ceiling. And as you can see, the leak is above. See that? Leaks above. Let's take this alive. No. It's dead. All right, let's see if we see anything in the wall between the first floor and 
this living room. Maybe it's coming from above. Let's see. Checked under the machine, the sink. No. Nothing out of the ordinary. Be like in New England somewhere in Massachusetts. Squirrels and rabbits running around. All right. <laughs> Interesting. Where does that condensate go? That is the million dollar question. All right. Where does that condensate go? It's frozen, I tell you that. And a Navian would say no bueno. I say no bueno too. Uh, maybe that's, I don't know. There's that window you could see. See, there's the basement window. All right, let me give you guys a little bit of an update. I learned that Friday afternoon, they come home to no heat. He called a friend who said he fixed the boiler. And, you know, did a few things, got up and running. Saturday afternoon, yesterday afternoon, no heat again. He calls his friend and he goes, uh, yeah, I can come Monday. And he goes, okay, yeah, I can wait. Three o'clock in the morning, pipe bursts, and he turns off all the water in the house. I checked under the first floor kitchen, which is directly above that leak in the basement. Under the dishwasher, under the ice, under the refrigerator, under the sink. Got the thermal engine camera to separate the den and the kitchen wall. I don't see anything funky going on in there. So I said, listen, I think it may be come from the second floor. Second floor, there's a bedroom, piece of baseboard there, and maybe, just maybe, the PEX has a hole in it. It's an outside wall, not really, but maybe it's split and it's slowly letting water through. But he goes, I'm going to call my friend, so just fix the boiler for me. And okay, and then go like deep, deep. Okay, I got my U.S. boiler Alpine service box. Inside that box is a plethora of Alpine parts. And here it is. This is the high-pressure temperature switch for the Alpine. The newer versions have a little pigtail on it, then the Molex connector. So you'll, you'll know right away because his original one just has the, uh, the Molex connector like right into the body of the sensor. So when you have that, 99% chance this is what you need. Seven-eighths. Say tubing. This is all frozen, literally. It's starting to melt up there, though. But we also have a little drip from there. Maybe because it's cold, and the drip there stopped. So it's first floor, or second floor, and I got my money on the second floor. Let's open up first floor. Let's see what happens. I just noticed that this was closed. So he opened it and I told him that when these are blocked like that, he restrict convention, convection, air, cold air going through, through the elements inside and up and out. And the other one's closed, yeah. Those are closed there too. Let's see. See, these are uh, kind of halfway open. You want them open? <coughs> when they're partially closed, 
they restrict the air. Mm. So you open them like this, fully okay. open. Right. You feel the heat. Uh -huh. you, when you close them, you restrict convection. Okay. All right, guys. It is 10.30 Sunday morning. Sunday, oh, 23rd of January, 2022. I was on site for a little bit over an hour and I missed an emergency uh, service call opportunity. Someone left a message when I first just got there and I guess we had bad service in the basement, but another customer had no heat, but I called him back and it was almost like an hour and a, almost an hour and a half, a little over an hour later. And he said, I think I got someone. I'm like, do you know you got someone? You think you got someone? I was like, well, he said he was coming. I'm like, all right. So it is what it is. I said, listen, I'm out in the field right now. So uh, if you want the emergency service call, give me a call within the next like 20 minutes before I park my truck for the day. All right, guys. Hope you uh, got something out of this. You know, if that Burnham Alpine. You know, that high temperature limit sensor, that is not programmed into the, um, the Sage 2 controller, that error. That error is not there. You know, you'll be going crazy with that high temperature limit sensor. You know, like, you'll even replace that Sage 2 controller because that's what it says in the manual. It does not tell you to check the high temperature limit probe. And taking a paper clip right there and the two wires uh, will verify that. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to go home now and spend some time with the family. Had a good little hustle this morning. Making that paper. And, and delivering heat and professional service to our clients. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'd appreciate it if you haven't done so already. So you subscribe. There's no cost or obligation to the channel. And smash that thumbs up button thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. Be well. God bless. Enjoy your Sunday. Stay safe. Go hug your kids.